In this video, we look at two related concepts. The first is called break-even analysis and the second is called indifference point. First, let's understand break-even analysis. For this, let's do a simple example. There's a person by name Raju and he sets up a small photocopier shop with a Xerox copier machine. He incurs a fixed cost of rupees 700 per day. It costs him 15 paise to produce one copy. He prices the copies at 50 paise each. What is Raju's break-even point and also known as break-even volume? So here we see two types of costs mentioned. The first is called the fixed cost. It is given to us as 700 rupees per day. The fixed cost refers to the expenditure that is incurred uh, even when the production volume is zero. It doesn't depend on how much is produced. Uh, the second cost is 15 paise per copy. And you can see here that the total cost will depend upon how many copies are produced. And so this cost is called the variable cost. We're also given the revenue or the selling price, uh, which is 50 paise each. So the break-even point is formally defined as the rate of production denoted by small r at which the total revenue, capital R, equals the total cost, capital D, and the net profit, capital N, equals zero. So this rate of production is known as the break-even point or the break-even volume. How do we find this? So let's do some simple analysis. The rate of production small r is defined as the number of units of volume produced or sold per unit time. The total cost per unit time, capital T, is equal to capital F plus capital V, where capital F represents the total fixed cost per unit time. Now, in this analysis, it's taken as a constant. It's not dependent on the rate of production. And the total variable cost per unit time, capital V, is equal to small c into small r, the small c represents the variable cost per unit produced. The cost of producing one unit only looking at the materials, labor, and so on. Here in this example, small c is taken as a constant and is not dependent on the rate of production. Capital V obviously will depend on the rate of production because it's small c into small r and r is a variable. So as the rate of production increases, the total variable cost incurred by unit time will also increase. The total revenue per unit time capital R is equal to small p into small r, where small p refers to the price per unit sold or produced. And from this equation, you can make out that capital R will also be dependent on the rate of production. It's directly proportional to the rate of production. Uh, so both capital R and capital V are dependent on the rate of production and they are variable, whereas uh, capital F is not, it's a constant. The total cost, capital T, can be written as the total of the fixed and variable costs. So capital F plus capital V. Since capital V is small c into small r, capital T becomes capital F plus small c into small r. The total revenue, capital R, we know is equal to small p into small r. And therefore, uh, we can write at the break-even point, since capital T must be equal to capital R, this equation, capital F plus small c into small r, must be equal to small p into small r. This has to be satisfied at the break-even point, And therefore, the break-even point, r prime is equal to f by p minus c. So using the values of capital F and small p and small c, we can find out the break-even point. Next, let's look at how this can be understood graphically. So here we have a graph on which the x-axis represents the rate of production, small r. And the y-axis represents the money spent or the money earned. Here, we have the fixed cost. The fixed cost is not dependent on the rate of production. And therefore, it's a line which runs parallel to the x-axis. The total variable cost, capital V, is equal to small c into small r. And since it depends on the rate of production, this line, the, variable, the total variable cost line, is a sloping line, as you can see depicted here. Next, the total cost is a sum of the variable and fixed costs. So capital T is equal to capital F plus capital V. And only capital V is a sloping line. Capital T will be also a sloping line with the same slope as capital V. The total revenue R is equal to small p into small r. And it's depicted by this green line. Uh, since capital uh, since small p is greater than small c, uh, the slope of this line will be greater than 
the slope of the total cost line. And therefore, the two lines intersect each other. This intersection point is where capital R is equal to capital T, which is a condition for finding out the break-even volume. And therefore, the break-even volume, as you can see, is represented by R star in this graph, which is equal to F by P minus C. We already have found out this formula. So this is how the break-even point appears on the graph. And you can see it is one value of the rate of production. Now let's apply our learning to Raju's photocopier shop. We have the fixed cost given to us as 700 rupees per day. The variable cost small c is 0.3 per unit. And the price is one rupee per unit. The break-even point therefore is capital F by P minus C, which works out to 1000 copies per day. So what does this mean? This means that if Raju produces more than 1000 copies per day, he will make a positive net profit. If he makes less than 1000 copies per day, then he will actually have a negative net profit or a loss. But if he makes exactly 1000 copies per day, he neither makes a profit nor makes a loss. His net earnings on that day are equal to zero. So this is the meaning of break-even point. Owners or the promoters of the initiative have to determine whether the, the break-even, the volume that they are, they are capable of producing will be such that they can make a positive profit. Next, let's go to the concept of indifference point. Indifference point is a concept that's associated with choosing between alternatives. Suppose we have uh, two options to choose from when we are investing in a new uh, venture or when we are setting up or expanding capacity of an existing venture. Uh, let's take an example again. Let's assume that our own friend Raju is now wanting to set up a juice shop. Okay, so he can go for two options to produce juice. One is the manual option where he and his employees produce juice manually. The second option is an automatic uh, setup where technology is involved and let's say a very sophisticated mixer is present uh, which can help them to produce juice. So let's look at the costs. The fixed cost per month for breaking juice manually would be rupees 2000, but with the technology it would be 10,000 because the investment uh, is much higher. The variable cost per liter of juice produced is rupees 50 for the manual option, whereas it's only rupees 30 for the technology option. The selling price per liter, which is the same, regardless of whether you make it manually or with the technology, the customer is not concerned. So you sell the juice to the customer for rupees 100 per liter, which means that the revenue uh, does not depend on which approach you take, it is constant. Now, uh, looking at this intuitively, we can see that one of the options has a higher fixed cost, whereas the other option has a higher variable cost. So this sort of points to the idea that probably there is a particular rate of production at which the total cost involved in making juice with the manual option would be equal to the total cost involved in making juice with the technology option. And on either side of this rate of production, one of the options would have a higher total cost than the other. So let's see how indifference point is defined. The whole idea of indifference point is the rate of production R at which the total cost of the process one, option one, is equal to the total cost of process two or option two. The revenue being the same, we can only look at the total costs here. So T1, capital T1 equal to capital T2. We can write F1 plus V1 equal to F2 plus V2. And putting it in terms of the numbers that we have, we get an equation like this, which tells us that the value of R star, the indifference point, is equal to 400. You can pause the video here and look at the equation and the values that we have substituted. Graphically, we can understand the indifference point in this manner. Here, the blue line represents the total cost of process A or option A or option one. And the red line represents the total cost of the other option, option B or option process B. So you can see that the two lines, because the, 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 the rates are not equal, uh, the costs are not equal, they will intersect at some point. They don't have the same slope, they will intersect at some point. And this point at which they intersect is a point at which the two, have, the two options have the to same total cost. And that is what we are calling as the indifference point. In this example, the indifference point came at 400. 
Now, on the left side of the indifference point, you can see that the process A will have a lower total cost. The blue line falls below the red line. And on the right side of the indifference point, option B has a lower total cost than option A uh, because it comes lower than the line here. And at the indifference point, the two total costs are equal. So what does it mean? It means that if you are venture is going to have a lower volume of production than the indifference point, you would want to go with option A. But if you think that you will get a higher volume of business than the indifference point, then you would be better off choosing option B. So this is how the indifference point is very useful to us in deciding between alternatives. Whatever I said just now has been summarized on the slide. Uh, so uh, indifference point and break-even analysis, both are very useful concepts when we talk about uh, either investing in a new capacity or expanding an existing capacity. Thank you.